So when I was a kid, I loved playing with tangrams. You basically try to match the shapes to a silhouette, which is often some sort of cute animal thing, which gave me an idea for some wall art. I'm thinking it makes some sort of really classy nursery art, or if you're me and kidless, maybe some less classy office art. We'll see. I started off by chopping quarter inch thick pieces of maple into tangrams. I had planned to cut the tangrams out of 10 inch by 10 inch squares, but my dumb self planned this two months ago, and when the day came to actually cut them, I accidentally made them into 11 inch by 11 inch squares instead. But you know, we make it work. I cut the pieces with my miter saw, which probably wasn't 100% safe since my fingers were closer to the blade than they should have been. The new to me bandsaw might have been a better choice, but then I would have had to figure out how to use it safely, and really, it's been doing such a great job collecting dust in the corner, why ask it to do more? Then I worked on the frame, which started with half inch plywood cut to be a 20 inch square on the table saw. I made a one and a half inch wide frame to go around it out of Kumaru, which is a type of wood I found in the cutoff section of my local hardwood supplier. Now, pro tip here, these pieces were only a buck or two a piece, which I thought was a steal. So if you haven't gone and browsed the cutoff section of a nearby hardwood supplier, you absolutely should. Then I put way more pocket holes than I actually needed onto the back of the plywood and attached the frame. I was feeling cheap when I bought the plywood, so it's not that nice and a little bit warped, so I ended up assembling the frame in stages. First, I glued it together with a bunch of paint cans pushing the plywood flat. Then about 30 minutes later, I scooched it off the counter and added the pocket hole screws for extra security. I had to come from below, and it was awkward and difficult, and I'm still a little stunned I didn't take a paint can to the head. Finally, I caulked every possible crack I could find. I like caulk, because the latex kind is water soluble, which allows my go-to strategy to be make a giant mess and clean it up later. Which, you know, is my favorite kind of strategy. I let the caulk dry for a few days, then I arranged and glued all the pieces in place with a little bit of wood glue. Some of the maple was warped too, since it's been in my basement for a while, so I weighed the pieces down with paint cans while the glue dried. It wasn't perfect, but I just decided it'd be easy to fix during sanding later. I'm good at lying to myself like that. Then I spent a few days talking myself into pouring the resin. So many things could go wrong. The resin could leak and it could spill everywhere. I might not put enough color powder in and it would be ugly. It might not be mixed right. The temperature could be wrong. The warped plywood could screw things up. My goodness, resin is high maintenance. Either way, I finally sucked it up and poured the resin and guess what? It was fine. I spent way too much time trying to level the frames, then I overmixed the resin, then I finally poured it and spent ages trying to make swirls appear. Eventually, I gave up and took a heat gun and blew it at the resin, which didn't appear to actually do anything, but the internet said I should to pop any bubbles, so I did. And if you were hoping for more detail than that, well, this is my very first resin pour, and I am the last person that anyone should be taking advice from. To be honest, the whole time I was fairly confident that I was just making a $150 mess, which is actually how I felt on this cat bed lampshade thing, so maybe this is a good sign. Either way, when the resin was dry, I started the long process of sanding. Some people have a CNC machine or a planer or some sort of fancy thing that makes leveling the wood and resin easier. I do not, so this was just a lot of sanding. Like 12 hours of sanding. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Which, shout out to my sketchy masking tape vacuum hose adapter thing, MVT of the project, and it would appreciate it if you hit the like button below in its honor. I started with 40 grit and sanded for a few hours, then when everything seemed level enough, I started working up to 600 grit. With wood, I typically stop at 180 grit, but I wasn't sure how long to sand the resin for, and an internet search was inconclusive, so I just kept going. It seems fine. Then I wiped down everything with mineral spirits and finished the piece. I was indecisive about the finish, mostly because I wasn't sure what works on resin, and every internet article I could find recommended products that were like $50 for this tiny little jar. And really, this project did not require a finish made of diamonds. Like, a $5 finish would have been just fine. So I started with satin polyurethane, and then when I decided I wanted more gloss, I stuck two coats of Zinsser shellac seal coat on top of it. 
Mixing and matching finishes is generally not a good idea, but Zinsser Seal Coat is basically magic and I didn't want to go to the store and that was what I had, so that was what I used. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed because my resin isn't swirly like all the cool popular resin on YouTube, but next time I guess. If you know how to make that happen, please help me in the comments below. Thanks and I'll see you next time.